If we can go to the next slide, Eden. So I just wanna welcome everybody and I'll start tonight by introducing Nathan Hallwadi. Nathan, I'll start us off tonight, thank you. Hi, I'm Nathan Hallwadi. I'm the new co uh, coordinator of member services here for uh, Saskatchewan Soccer Association. I'm covering for uh, Nicole's maternity leave. Uh, I've been here since uh, August 11th and uh, I've had some contact with uh, some of you members out there, but for those I haven't, I'm glad to make my introduction to you tonight. And please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm always happy to hear about the different organizations that are part of SAS Soccer across the province. And I look forward to, to learning and working with all of you during my time with SAS Soccer here. So uh, you know, to get the Nate going, I'd like to introduce the president of the board of directors of the Saskatchewan Soccer Association, uh, Lisa Bagan-Larry. Thank you, Nathan. And welcome again to you, Nathan. Uh, so on behalf of the board of directors and staff, I'd like to welcome all our member organizations to the call tonight. Also like to acknowledge our SSA directors, Janelle Layton, Chair of, Risk and fin Chair of Risk Management, and Andrew Kitchen, Chair of Nominations to the call. I'd like to start off this mini meeting by acknowledging that the land that we are gathered on today, although remotely, is that of Treaty 2, Treaty 4, Treaty 5, Treaty 6, Treaty 8, Treaty 10, and is the traditional territory of the Cree, the Dakota, the Dene, the Lakota, Nakota, Soto, and the homeland of the Métis people. It was a great summer. A big thanks goes out to all our member organizations who ensured that soccer was held safely and successfully across Saskatchewan. The new season brings new challenges related to COVID-19, and now we have a resource that was not available, available to us a year ago, vaccinations. Vaccines have proven to be the most effective way forward to ensure the continuance of sport in our province. Thanks to all those who've been able to get vaccinated and promote vaccines in your for your organizations and communities. This has not been an easy time for sporting organizations in Saskatchewan, and we understand you are all under, under pressure to act. We hope to address many of your questions and concerns tonight, but keep in mind that we will have new information soon and we'll continue to provide you updates when information becomes available. While this has been a challenging time for soccer, we must be grateful that we have the opportunity to continue sport during these difficult times. With that, I'll hand everything over to Doug, our executive director, to go over tonight's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. So uh, right now, if you if you're, have your videos on, if we could get you to mute, it seemed like we had some bandwidth issues. I'm not sure if anybody else is experienced in that. So we'll try to do that And once we get into this. And Eden, there was an item in the chat with Linda from Kindersley. Uh, I'm not sure if you can help her out or not. And I, see, I see you came back in. Um, I was trying to chat with you there and she signed out. So I, I think she's just so, log, logging back into the meeting now. Okay. Um, so I'll see if I can get her back. All right, thank you, uh, Eden. If you can just jump to uh, uh, logistics quickly, just uh, as one more quick reminder. Again, if people can take the time to rename yourself, first name, last name at member organization, use your comment box. Eden will be uh, monitoring that. and notify me when there's people in the chat. And also if you wanna be recognized, uh, Eden will be monitoring the raised hands, et cetera. And feel free to ask questions all along the way. We'll present some information and then we'll also offer questions uh, at various points too. So uh, that's it for logistics. We'll jump right into the agenda, Eden. I'm gonna turn my video off as well now and we'll, we'll get into this piece here, so. Uh, so the agenda tonight, we have some good news and Raheem will introduce us to the SSA Student Coach Credit Program and talk about competitions. Uh, we're gonna invite Andrew Kitchen as our chair of nominations to talk about nominations and diversity on the board. We'll talk about the bylaw consult that's coming up related to that. And of course, we'll dive deep into uh, uh, COVID and, and wanna talk to you folks and find out about your experiences, uh, get your questions. Uh, we may not be able to answer all your questions, but we'll track them all. And then we'll try to get the best answers we can as soon as possible. So with that, Eden, we'll jump right in and we'll introduce Raheem Mohammed, as Director of Soccer, to talk about a couple of the, the programs that we have coming up. Thanks, Doug. Hello, everyone. It's been a while. It's good to see so many individuals on the call here today. So I'm going to provide a couple of technical updates for everyone. Um, the first one is something we are incredibly excited to announce. So the Saskatchewan Ministry of Education has approved our application to offer high school 
um, high school student coach credit program. The program is built around the student completing the Canada Soccer's grassroots coach education program and gaining practical experience within the local soccer community. This will provide the framework and opportunity for student athletes to give back to their communities while fostering and teaching the love of coaching. This will provide the necessary coaching levels while assisting with credit attainment, uh, which will allow student coaches a bit of flexibility in their course selections as, as co um, coaching sessions, as coaching after school programs can be quite demanding. Um, we want to provide or we want to give special thanks to Chad Stryker and Angel Goddard for their support in helping us move this uh, move this program forward. It was on a member call where they both stepped up to offer assistance to us and that's led us down this path where um, moving forward high school students within uh, our various communities will have the ability to go through the coaching education program from Canada Soccer and also receive high school credit and support your local organization. In an attempt to provide people with as much of a timeline as possible, uh, we are working on, or we've worked on provisional dates for competitions for 2022. Obviously COVID is gonna linger on for a little bit longer and we're, un we're unsure of what the potential impacts may be over the course of the next year, however, uh, we do have some scheduled weekends for our indoor 2022 competitions and our outdoor 2022 competitions. This information will be added to the website over the coming week and into the next uh, member organization communication via email as well. Um, but this is to help guide organizations know when some of our provincial events are going to be held um, and help them plan around them if they would so like to participate. Next slide, please, Eden. The Saskatchewan Games are coming up in February of 2022 in Regina. Uh, we are excited that Futsal will be making an appearance in the Winter Games for the first time. So player ID camps will take place between October and November with the team selection set to be announced in December. Uh, registration in information for district ID camps will be posted on the SSA website October 1st. We appreciate everyone that has been proactive in reaching out to us about uh, when uh, player ID camps will be. Um, so just keep in mind that after October 1st, all the information will be provided on the website. And in addition to that, district team staff announcements will be made on October 1st with, in conjunction with the opening of the ID camps. Uh, we're excited to have so many coaches step forward wanting to participate through the different sport districts. Um, if anyone is still interested, there are a couple of openings in some different sport districts. Please reach out to Marcus Rankins. Raheem, just before you get off of that slide, um, just a reminder that right now on TSN, the Football World Championships are on, so you can take advantage of that. I think they're on some 1030s in the morning, typically somewhere in there. So take a look. Uh, the semifinals are coming up in a couple of days. Thanks for adding that in, Doug. Yeah, you're welcome. The 2021 Canada Summer Games were postponed to 2022. So we've updated our information package and the Canada Summer Games program has now been released. So all the information for the games, including player registration dates, identification dates, training camp dates, uh, coaching application um, process um, and selection dates, and when the event is gonna be held can now be found on the SSA website. If you're familiar with the SSA website, if you go to events followed by multi-sport games and scroll down to the 2022 Canada Summer Games, you'll find a link to the information package. Coaching applications are also open at this time. They will close on October 21st, 2021. So if you know of an interested coach, uh, please encourage them to submit their application. One of the things that we have put a lot of thought into is not just having a coaching staff that's dedicated to the games itself, but how can we mentor coaches through uh, multi-sport games as well? So we have a role um, that we call the support coach, which is there to gain experience and knowledge within the multi-sport games preparation and setting. While, they, while those coaches may not travel to Canada Summer Games, it can be a really good developmental step for any coach. So um, please keep that in mind. And if you have any, if you have any questions about the program, um, or the information package and or Canada Summer Games, please contact Adam Miller. 
and I believe I will be handing it off to Andrew. Thanks, Raheem. Yeah, we'll introduce Andrew Kitchen as chair of nominations to talk about nominations to the board. Andrew? Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so SSA has been seen as a leader in Canada with our board and governance model. And we're hoping to keep this true with our diversity plans. Uh, so last year we introduced the Everybody's Game, our diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. And we believe that this leadership starts with the board. So we do ask for the members' support in introducing some new bylaw amendments around the board flexibility to appoint directors to ensure that we hit these diversity needs. In 2022, our AGM will have six directors who will remain on the board through 2023, six positions that are up for election in 2022, and four of the four directors are planning to seek re-election. So we do invite candidates from all walks of life to consider the board, and we do look for candidates, particularly those with legal expertise, as we're, uh, this is a, an area that we would like to grow our grow strength in on our, on our board. Um, so please watch for further details on the bylaws and our nominations recruitment and the nominations forms will be due on December 15th. Thank you, Andrew. Questions about this? None in the chat. None in the chat. That's great to hear. Uh, and I hope everybody will support this. We're, we're trying to make our board more diverse and we and we really do hope that, uh, that we can be very much leaders in, in Canada about the diversity and especially around this wonderful game of soccer. Thank you, Andrew. So carrying on with that, we'll, the bylaw consult, of course, occurs every fall. So we'll have our bylaw amendments to, out to membership shortly. So our goal, of course, is to develop our bylaws with the support of membership and we'll have the consult to try to work through that with you. We invite membership on the, any uh, proposed changes. And of course, on in providing input to the amendments that we've proposed. And the timelines will lose early uh, release of this information in the next few days. Uh, invitation for members proposals to amendments. And then we will recirculate all the information at some point, uh, which gives us some time to prepare for an online uh, bylaw consult. We had anticipated an in-person event this year, but uh, with the numbers the way they are recently, we've gone back to an online format. We hope we'll develop consensus. And of course, once we have our meeting, we'll recirculate the uh, bylaw considerations for membership. Deadline as always is December 15th uh, for final amendments for membership, and they'll be voted on at the AGM in March 19. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, Eden, I'll just pause for a second. If you will have any questions for Raheem, uh, myself, or Andrew on any of the first few slides before we jump into the COVID. And we'll have an opportunity for questions at the end again. So thank you, Eden. So as we prepare for indoor soccer, first off, I would just want to thank everybody for being on the line uh, tonight and for your tremendous work to make indoor soccer possible. And of course, for all the work you did this summer to uh, I'm sure have a, a great season outdoor. Um, really grateful for all, all the organizers, the coaches, the officials, the board members uh, who do everything to make soccer possible. And especially during this last year and a half or so, it's been a very challenging time. So we know that participants and others are wanting answers. Um, for us, we, we stay in conversation with BRT and Sport on a regular basis as we've had three uh, weeks in a row with meetings. And they really try to advise us not to make decisions based on assumptions of what might come next. Um, so during this time, we want to stress patience with each other, insist on respectful interactions at all time, and you know, really try to send a message that we need to remain committed to working through these challenges together. The reality is that no one, including the BRT, can give final answers. So the situation is fluid, and the answer we got last week may be slightly amended or totally changed the next week. That is a very difficult challenge for all of you. We appreciate it. And uh, we go through in some detail with BRT, our other sport colleagues with SAS Sport, trying to 
work our way through those things. So we send the information out when we can. And it's a great, it's, a, it's really important to understand there's a lot of complexity in each question because there's layers to this, whether it's 18 plus, whether it's 17 and under, whether it's youth, whether it's youth and adult organizations, there's all different layers. So there's no such thing as simple questions and we do our best to share the best answer, the best interpretation we have at any given moment. And we know that of course, that October 1st, they'll bring new information with proof of vaccine protocols being announced. And we do not yet know what impact that will have on sport and what interpretations there may be once we actually see the, uh, P, uh, the public health order itself. So um, as we said, we'll continue to do our best to get answers and the best interpretations to you as quickly as possible. Next slide, please. So how can you make a difference? Of course, vaccinations are the difference these days. So encourage everyone to be fully vaccinated. Again, insistent interaction to respectful to make sure that your organizers, your volunteers, your referees, everyone is engaged, but safe and supported. Um, of course, be informed of the COVID protocols, uh, which vary by community and follow all public health orders uh, for municipal, municipal <laughs> sorry, municipalities and obviously facilities, uh, all of which may have different uh, guidelines. Uh, we're currently uh, finding out more information about contact tracing and Eden, I believe, has a link uh, for the chat which talks about contract tracing, which requires people's assistance. So if you're identified as a uh, COVID case, they're gonna ask you to do your own contact tracing. And that information's up on the website. Uh, I certainly don't know the ins and outs of it all, but there is some different new information on the website. So the biggest thing is we have to be prepared to respond to changes that will definitely occur in the coming weeks. And we hope we're patient and and keep focused on the prize um, uh, of playing soccer, which is really certainly incredibly beneficial to everybody's uh, physical and mental and social um, health uh, these days. So we're grateful to be playing and we know there's likely to be challenges in the weeks ahead, but thanks to all of you, we can still make a difference for people and allow soccer to continue. Eden? So some of the COVID protocols, again, most of this stuff is stuff you've heard already. So. Make sure people self-monitor, stay home if they're sick and seek a COVID test. People, of course, are encouraged to be fully vaccinated because in that case, they're no longer considered a close contact and do not then have to self-isolate. Masks, of course, are required indoors when not active on the pitch, but participants may also wear masks if they choose during the field of activity. And we'll talk more about that in later slides. Of course, some of the protocols we had in the past would be of value to us, reducing gathering size, minimizing access to the facilities before and active activities, very important. Ventilation, if you can manage those pieces, and of course, hand washing, cleaning protocols, as common surfaces, et cetera, all those things can make a difference. So for 18 plus, of course, there's public health order requiring uh, masking uh, in sport. Uh, so individuals 18 years of age and older and on ice or on court officials, in that case, they mean referees, while participating in sport activities for the duration of the sport or activity only, so long as they are subject to a proof of vaccination policy. So some additional language and clarification from BRST, and these are in blue or quotes directly from BRT, Adults can remove their masks while playing if the entire league is subject to the proof of vaccination policy. Note, it says while playing. It is not okay to just wear a mask for those who do not wanna provide proof of vaccination. Everyone must be subject to proof of vaccination or provide a negative COVID test. Next slide, please. On the youth side, of course, there's a masking order uh, around the facility, but players are exempt from max masking while participating. Uh, all, all the folks on the sidelines, of course, need to be masked um, for the duration. And the next one, again, is just summarizing some of these two, and you'll see some additional quotes and information we've got from BRT. So, and if individuals do not fall within the exemptions noted, they must remain masked during the course of the activity. And we've read those to you earlier. 
So when you have a proof of vaccination policy in place, coaches and team personnel and others on the sidelines not participating must wear masks at all times, regardless of whether or not they've provided proof of negative test. We also just recently learned that there's gonna be an overlap between the two health orders. And it's really not clear at this point when the masking provisions may be listed, lifted. Uh, again, they talked about them being temporary, but now we're getting this language that they're not clear on when they may be lifted. So if you're putting a proof of vax policy in place, remember that the masking mandate is still in effect. So Eden, I think that's an update for me and I think we'll go to questions and answers and uh, we certainly wanna hear from folks how you're doing. Um, we have, I think, about 20 plus member organizations online. That's wonderful. You know, talk about your circumstances. Some of you are considering policies, others have policies in place. Uh, we want to hear from you. So this piece is open, and I see uh, Eden Chad Stryker from Swift Current. Chad, welcome Hi, to the call. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question would be why would we start at 18 plus when? age of vaccine eligibility is 12 plus. I'm uh, living in the corner of Saskatchewan where we are in an absolute inferno. Uh, right. School sports is getting canceled every day because we don't have enough people vaccinated to play. Um, and so I wanna be able to protect the ability to play. I also wanna protect the people that are coming out to our buildings every, every week. I would like to, I'd like SAS soccer to come and make a proof of vaccination for all children or all people that are age eligible. And then that would carry forward as that vaccine comes younger and younger. Thank you, Chad. Anything else you want to add to that? Uh, well, I guess, you know, I think about the summer that we shut down basically completely and Canada soccer and Saskatchewan soccer had more strict rules than anybody else. And we saw, um, you know, football continue to do some stuff where we were kind of on the sidelines. And now with where our COVID reality is and the numbers that they are and the hospitalizations increasing I can't see why we wouldn't be leaders in the province to say, you know what, we're going to offer soccer, but we're going to do it in the safest mode that we can, like we have been preaching for the last 18 months. And I don't, I don't see a mandate of vaccine policy at 18 plus reaching those standards that we have set before. Thank you, Chad. And so, you know, I'll provide some comment and invite input from other folks. Obviously, one of the things, again, we meet weekly with Sasport and BRT. Um, the, the approach from most of the sports in the province at this time is that best, best decisions are made locally at this point because you know your community, you know your data, and you know your membership better than we do. But it's not that we're immune to the conversations that you're providing us, Chad. And certainly, we're waiting to understand the impact of October 1st announcement. Uh, and then we are certainly going to be meeting at the board level to consider all the options available to us, uh, uh, certainly. And those are the, you know, those are, we follow uh, and, and, and we often lead. And, and I appreciate your comments very much. And, and we've been, been hard at this and, and we're not at the point that we're mandating at this point, but it's not out of the realm of possibility uh, in the future. But those are things. Uh, there's a lot of complexities to that conversation and certainly we wanted to have conversations here tonight to make sure we hear from you folks to see how you're feeling about various things uh, related to that so thank you very much on that chat if i can add one more thing doug yeah of the top 26 regions of COVID activity in our country saskatchewan has 14 of the top 16 and that's basically every region with the exception of Regina and Saskatoon. And so if we are a provincial organization, we need to look at how we can protect the ability to play soccer in all regions and not just in Saskatoon and Regina. Thank you, Chad. Again, we, uh, Nathan and myself were on a Sask Health uh, webinar yesterday. It was extremely eye-opening. We won't uh, share data from that because we're not medical experts to interpret it. But we do want to remind the membership 
that of course you can put a prof, uh, you can put it, uh, policies in place that are higher than the current standard set by the government government and and of course higher than uh, at this point we don't have standards we're just following the PHO uh, mandate but the members certainly can do that and 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 certainly I think you're probably going to see more sports doing it and probably more soccer organizations and as we said Chad those are things we'll be considering uh, in a lot of detail in the coming days so thank you other questions or comments from anybody would appreciate hearing from uh, the sports that have or the, the organizations that have policies in place and also hearing about your experiences in talking and communicating with membership. Any questions you have or we're grateful to share. I believe we have TJ on the line. He would have been one of the first, FCR would have been one of the first to started a mandate. I'd be interested to hear, TJ, with being an adult in your youth organization, how your how the feedback's been going. You know what, In it's been actually not bad. Uh, there are members who actually had issues with that and we actually told the members, if you are not comfortable with it, uh, we are uh, running our programming in, the, in, the, in a building which is owned by the city. So these are the mandates from the city. So you have to basically follow them. Um, we are also, um, only people who can actually come into the building are either um, they show the negative uh, uh, negative test uh, or uh, they're vaccinated. So that's a pol policy we put in place. And people who had issues with that, basically we offered them, uh, you can have, a, have a, a refund if you want, uh, or else basically they have to, they have to show the negative test uh, or, or they have to show the vaccination uh, record. Um, so for the players, we only took it the first time and now we have marked them in our own records it's not public uh, but uh, we know that if the player is vaccinated or not but the ones who are not then they basically have to uh, show the negative uh, COVID test uh, I know the government is also offering uh, the, the the rapid tests for free to nonprofits, and uh, so those are the ones we are using right now so people either can show uh, the test from uh, like a local company here hashtag either they do it or the drive through uh, I know drive through has been backed up a little right now, uh, but we have been offering those uh, uh, those rapid tests to people who want to uh, just play and not show the vaccination proof or they are not vaccinated. Um, but yeah, it's other than that, like I think it first week was a little little hiccups here and there, but now people know what to expect. So it's not it's been good. Thank you, TJ. Is there what is there any big learnings that you had uh, from your experience of you know having that uh, having to go to, through the mandate, anything that you'd uh, suggest to people that maybe are considering? Um, to be honest, Doug, like I think the membership also, again, there are all, there are two sides of a coin, but uh, there are, most of the members are understanding that and understandable. Like it's 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 for their own safety, right? So yeah. it's for the safety of the youth. Um, youth can't be vaccinated under under uh, twelve, so they. They are, to be honest, very understanding, uh, understandable. Like it's it's been good. Thank you, TJ. Yeah. So I noticed a comment, Eden, in the chat. Are we going to share the presentation? You want to speak to that, please? Oh, I don't think I've seen. It. Did they just uh, chat that to you? Uh, I guess it's a direct message to me. Sorry, I didn't read it properly. So it says, are you going to share this presentation? The members in the dis registered in the discussion after the meeting. So. Uh, I think yeah. generally these get posted um, probably by tomorrow morning or something, I assume, at least. Yeah, all of, our, all of our member discussions are on our YouTube page. We also put them up on our website and we share them to members in our, our communications that are sent out every couple of weeks. So that recording will be made available through our YouTube page and also be attached in our communication that goes out next week. If you'd like it before that time, you can feel free to send me an email. Like I'll put it in the chat here and I can send it to you once we have everything edited and up, uploaded onto the website. Thank you, Eden. Mm -hmm. I guess one thing we could do, if, if unless people um, don't feel it's necessary, is you could just share it to everybody that's registered and that would be taken care of. But of course, other people will get it directly in different ways. So I'll leave that with you guys. 
So uh, again, uh, just invite any comments, questions from anybody out there. I'm sure everybody's got lots of questions. Um, the information is changing rapidly, and uh, we're going to find thing uh, we'll find things out new this week. We'll probably find new things out next week. The numbers will continue to change, and the pressure will continue to build on the government. And, and of course, uh, we all want to do our part. Uh, and, and 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 Chad had some good comments. Obviously, we're going to consider those things, but. Obviously we wanna hear from you folks and, and really that's why we have these calls is to, to get connected and, and offer uh, assistance and uh, to act like a community when, when we need each other's help in this. So any thoughts or comments are appreciated. I would also be interested to hear, I believe we have Mike from Yorkton on. And Mike, are you guys currently active uh, with your indoor season? Have you started already? Uh, yeah, we're just, getting going here. Yeah, and have you had a lot of inquiries regarding if you guys are going to be mandating anything for your adult players? Um, our adult hasn't started though, sorry. We're, okay. we're waiting for the, you know, this week to get through the, with the announcements and then putting together a strategy. Curious. I'm going to ask one more here. I see that LDSA is on and they are a specific and adult organization. So Amanda, and Alyssa, um, have you guys been having thoughts or been meeting, discussing potential vaccine mandates? Um, we are the same. We are waiting to see um, after the October 1st announcement to go from there and decide what we're gonna do. So not feeling any pressure from any of the membership yet? Not yet. Okay. And then also our, um, our facility too is going to announce um, if they're changing their protocols as well. So that's something we're waiting for as well. Eden, would other people sort of feel like this, that's true for them too? Every a lot of people waiting, obviously, for information from October first, and and or maybe from their facility and or municipality. They should show me a hands up if they are, because that would give me a kind of a good indication. Um, if they're kind of waiting for October 1st. So if you're if you're waiting for that public health announcement to come out, hopefully before the first, uh, we got Saskatoon Youth, I think, put one up, Moose Jaw, Meridian, Swift, Tisdale. So yeah, it looks like a lot of members are waiting for that. Well, this is this is kind of the commentary we've had at our Sasport meetings and, and again, uh, is, is there's still a lot of misinformation or, 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 or I shouldn't say misinformation. There's a lack of understanding of what's coming next. And, but we certainly know that something big is coming October 1st, but we have no idea what the impact will be on sport. But one thing we do know is that the government is, is, is really working hard. And that was brought out on the SASC health call um, yesterday. The government's really working hard to make sure that sport is possible, particularly for youth, because they feel it's such an important um, mental, physical, social health contributor. Uh, but I see that there's uh, Giselle and then Dana with their hands up, Eden. So I'll, I'll talk to Jan Giselle first. They might still have their hands up for voting, but yes, we will pause okay, and see if That's okay. I, I may be a misinterpreted. Giselle, do you have something to say? Or you're, if you don't, take your, you can take your hand down. And Sorry, you no, I didn't really have much to say other than possibly if if it does become mandated, like I know Swift Current was hoping for it to be brought down to the age of 12. If right. that were to happen in Tisdale, it would shut us down. Right, and that's the kind of feedback we're wanting, and that's the complexity of the conversations. Each community, each member group has different uh, data from their community, different experiences, and are going to react differently. And uh, we know that, that the, this is not a unanimous uh, decision one way or another. So Giselle, Giselle, you want to talk a little bit more about what you what you think your members are telling, telling us, telling you, I should say? Um, we just have a lot of, of our members that aren't vaccinated and feel strongly about not vaccinating. Um, that's their personal choice, I guess. Yep. Um, so if we, if we were to mandate that, they had to be vaccinated or have this test, a lot of them just wouldn't bother and it would just, it seriously would just close our, our club down pretty much for the season. Thank you. And there's downsides to, to that because of course, then those folks don't get the benefit of the sport and recreation that people really need after this long time in isolation. And 
Uh, yeah. That's why it's not just an easy fix on that. Absolutely. Thank you, Giselle. Um, Alyssa. So I was under the impression that um, each organization was going to be required to implement some form of proof of vaccination or negative COVID test. Is that not what's been made clear by the government of Saskatchewan, that we are going to have to do that at some point? No, we don't know what they're going to do on October 1st, but the early indication is that they're going to do a proof of va uh, vaccine mandate for provincial employees and various organizations at certain levels. Um, we have no idea if they'll do that, for example, for adult soccer or, or, and or youth, but we, we very much know that the government is trying very hard uh, to make sure that sport is accessible to youth 18 and under. Uh, again, based on their mental, physical, social, emotional health uh, the way that they feel are, is significantly negatively impacted this last year. So um, so we don't know what's going to happen with that and uh, what, what the impact is on sport just yet. So right now, of course, it is a, a choice that member organizations can make uh, based on their own circumstances. Okay, so any of the implementations that we've seen maybe from, like I saw Cold Lake has done something already. Um, there's some gyms here in Lloydminster that have started to put things forward. That's all on their own um, volition at this point. Uh, so Cold Lake, that's Alberta, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm not can comment on that. Now, gyms, et yeah. cetera, there's different mandates in the public health organization, uh, public health order. So various facilities will be impacted by that, but there is a, a sense that non-ticketed uh, uh, sport events are, they're wanting to keep that exempt. And there's a lot of detail into that explanation, which I don't quite have at my fingertips for you right there, but that's the kind of thing will start to be cleared up by the October 1st announcement. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Wendy Wagner. I can clarify the city of Lloydminster's um, confusion um, because we're by provincial. Not all of our facilities and organizations fall under the Saskatchewan Health Order. We are no longer under a state of emergency. So each side of the city has to follow the provincial guidelines and their professional association. So the gyms based on what side of the city they're on have to follow Alberta or Saskatchewan. Um, which makes it more confusing for us as an organization because the facilities we will participate in are Alberta land located, not Saskatchewan. That's so really us, It's more complicated. Um, mm -hmm. Our city has given us information that they will be releasing all recommendations October 1st and nothing before because we haven't received the health order just like everyone else. Thank you, Wendy. And I'm, I was just looking at uh, trying to find the language in the public health order. And I, I thought, well, maybe it wasn't so uh, un undefined for you guys in Lloyd, uh, because I thought that the public health order was for Saskatchewan and the city of Lloyd Minster. That's the language I, I'm sure I heard at some point, but you're suggesting that it's, it's a split. Um, yeah, our state of emergency was lifted on July 11th. So based on the professional organization and the land location, and if they fall under Alberta Liquor and Gaming and Health, or if they fall under Saskatchewan Liquor and Gaming and Health is based on what guidelines that they'll have to follow. Thank you very much, Wendy, I appreciate that. You're welcome. So guys, you know, after a long summer, it feels better to talk. If you guys have um, other thoughts or questions, anything you wanna share, from your communities, we'd really be interested, of course. I'm just gonna say that I understand the hesitancy uh, in terms of Tisdale. Like I am, you know, Swift Current, we are living in a community that 30% of our uh, people are vaccinated. And I know I'm gonna lose people if we go through this, but. I am looking around and watching school after school in our, in our uh, school division get moved to outbreak status because we can't control the spread of the Delta variant. And 
I, you know, I picked up my son yesterday from school because he didn't have volleyball practice anymore because now his school's in an outbreak. And I don't want to be in that position where I'm telling kids that we, as a soccer association, are now considered a, a health outbreak and we got to shut down for 28 days. It is devastating for schools and for us to lose full 28 days of activity in in the in a four month season we're losing an entire month like it's a quarter right so yeah i want to do what we can to protect those people that want to play and want to do it safely i understand the hesitancy and the oh my gosh people are going to leave us but at some point we got to be able to start moving forward in life and i really don't see how we're going to do that until we have a universal age vaccine unless we make the, the commitment to move to a vaccine mandate and be able to make sure that we play safely and when we play against other communities that we get to do so safely as well. Well said, Chad, thank you very much. And again, we're, we're really monitoring closely and remember we're here to help regardless if, if members are wanting to choose to go to a proof of vaccination policy, uh, the, you know, there's things we can do to assist Ultimately, the decision at this point would need to be on your own to do so, uh, unless you know, unless other decisions have been made that we notify you about. But at this point, uh, there's only a couple of sports uh, as of last uh, Friday that I'm aware of that have mandated, but uh, they've done a, probably a fairly thorough job, and 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 I think those policies are probably available on their way, websites, and and we can also learn from those colleagues if we have questions. I'm sure they would share their experiences. So right now, Curl Sask and Ring It, are, are, as far as I'm aware, those are the only two that have mandated uh, from a provincial sport organization. So there's about 60 plus other sports that have not chosen to do so yet, based on the complexities of the conversations we're having here tonight. Nothing in the chat yet, Doug. All right, thank you. Again, I, 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 I'm not gonna, uh, you know, people are prepared to talk. That's great. We're going to continue to have calls. So Eden, you know, sometimes we'll, let's just, let's just jump to the next slide and we'll walk through that and people can still consider questions, but we'll, we'll jump in just a couple of short conversations. So the member discussions, uh, obviously we didn't see you folks through the summer and I'm sure that everybody was probably grateful for that because we had a reasonably good summer without the need for this, but we're glad to have these monthly or more often if you feel uh, we do need to have a level of engagement to make them valuable to us. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to prepare for these and, and a lot of staff resources and board and et cetera, and all of you folks. So we want to make them worthwhile. So if, if um, we're going to have the monthly until uh, unless members tell us otherwise, but obviously we'll have them as required. So if something major comes up and we feel it's enough impact, we may uh, host another call on short notice. So I'd appreciate hearing from anybody if, uh, if you have other thoughts about how often uh, we should have these member discussions. While I'm waiting on that, if there's any comments, so, so the fall member sessions, again, we had hoped to be meeting all you folks in, in person again, but at this point, uh, we think we'll be going to online formats. The bylaw consults we've Meant, mentioned previously. We'd like to hear what your interests are on the technical side, on the administrative side, etc. cetera. Uh, at this point, the in-person AGM is planned March 19, 20 in Saskatoon and area. So uh, we still wanna keep engaged and meeting folks in person. We're, we hope we can do that sometime soon, but um, each day we plan something that seems to change. So if there's any thoughts or comments of that, uh, you can send your comments to Nathan uh, who's at CMS at sassoccer.com. So even if you want to get that in the chat for folks, uh, we'd be glad to um, have your comments about any of those things. Next slide, Eden. Nathan, are you available? Yes, I am. Um, Thanks. So this next slide here is talking about the SSA recognition awards, which are now open. So if you know someone that goes above or beyond uh, on or off the field, SSA extends the invitation to nominate players, 
teams, coaches, referees, and volunteers that exemplify the values, vision, uh, vision, and mission of the organization. So the award nominees and winners will be celebrated at the AGM during the awards banquet celebration on March the 19th, 2022. Uh, the deadline to submit nominations is coming up on December 15th. So less than three months away. So to submit a nomination and for further information about the awards and recognition process, uh, you can visit our website uh, or you can email me and you know, I'll be happy to, uh, to help you out there. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of information on, on the website that you can get about the, the different awards. And uh, I would love to have a whole bunch of uh, nominations from all across the province. So if you can uh, get with that and uh, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, the next slide here is um, the upcoming deadlines. Um, so September 30th, we've got the final outdoor registration submission deadline for registrations received after May 31st and the MAP grant follow-up deadline. And uh, October 1st, the club licensing submission deadline. On October 21st, we have the Canada Summer Games coach application deadline. And then uh, for December 15th, uh, as I mentioned, the SSA awards, as well as uh, you know, bylaws and you know, nominations. That's nominations to the, um, so to the board. board. Yeah. Thank you, Nathan. So again, with the awards and the AGM, again, let's, you know, hopefully by late March next year, we'll be in a position where we can all get together. We'd love to have everybody come and celebrate that soccer's still going and we're all doing well. So we'd love to see you folks there. Um, we appreciate all your input, your attendance tonight. And Eden, uh, we'll just jump to, uh, to questions if there's any more from the folks. Uh, and also uh, Lisa, uh, Andrew, if you have any comments as we're heading out. Uh, I see Hugh Dooley. So Hugh, thanks for your question. You got the floor. Are you you're muted still? There you go. I think I lost Hugh there, uh, Eden. Yeah, he was, I'm just looking here where he went. Okay, no worries. If you have something, we'll, we'll be a couple of Can you hear me? Can you yeah. hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Uh, just on one of your recent communications, I noticed that uh, with Thursday being uh, the Truth and Recognition federal holiday, yeah. Uh, I noticed that you guys are open, and I'm I'm wondering uh, if if it'd be prudent for you guys to consider moving forward that that becomes a a day that the SSA uh, takes off as part of that uh, process and, and what it's supposed to be about. Um, I understand SAS board is open, but I think there should be some movement. And, and I think if provincial organizations do a little bit on their part to push the agenda, it should become a provincial holiday uh, along with the federal. Thank you very much, Hugh. Appreciate your sentiments on that. I actually was talking to Amanda about that uh, today, maybe, or I think it was today. <laughs> but um uh, and, you know, right now we haven't uh, uh, sat down and amended our policy, but we are, so for this year, uh, since it was first announced that we're going to be honoring Orange Shirt Day, wearing our shirts, we all have education sessions planned that day about truth and reconciliation with our staff in the afternoon. So we're certainly honoring the day and, uh, and we will take that under advisement as you and, and certainly uh, I think that, the, that your sentiment is, is uh, well received. And it certainly aligns with our commitment to under everyone's game to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I appreciate you speaking up about that and, and we'll take that under consideration. And of course, uh, think about that uh, for the next opportunity we have next year. So thank you, Hugh. All right, so um, again, uh, last chance for questions. I'll invite comments from Lisa, Andrew, any, anyone else, uh, just as we start to go out the door. I have a quick question for TJ before Lisa does it. As uh, TJ, I was just wondering which technology you were using that was verifying if the player was vaccinated or not. All right, now uh, we are just asking them to provide uh, uh, the, the QR code uh, even though we don't have, but the QR code actually the whole screenshot shows you if when and when like the person's name 
and yep. when yep. both of the shots were taken. Um, so, and then we also asked them to bring an ID um, and then we look at that way. I know um, City is going to be introducing uh, or uh, putting it on site here, the QR code readers. Uh, we are also accepting their uh, wallet cards like the wallet uh, vaccination cards. Um, so yeah, those are some of the ones we are accepting right now. So you said once they for vaccination, they are, um... They don't have to do it again. Do you guys have a tracking mechanism in place? Yes, uh, we just, it's internally, it's, it's a very, um, I would say labor intensive, but it is what we have to do uh, just for the players themselves. So we are actually running, one is a game sheet, but the other one we have a, our own sheet, which actually shows who's, who's vaccinated, who's not. And then only, and then we have a check-in desk where uh, we have a staff uh, present and they are the ones who, they're the only ones who know if the person is not vaccinated and then they actually ask them to do the, to do the, the, the test at that time or provide a, um, a negative test result from last 72 hours. Perfect, thanks TJ. And no worries. Thanks TJ. And of course, there's gonna be information coming out, we hope very soon on the QR readers. And of course, clarifying the availability of, of this information. And of course, the, the ability to uh, manage it without impacting people's privacy. So appreciate your comments there, TJ, thank you. All right, well, we're drawing to a close here. Um, on behalf yeah, Doug. of- Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. Sorry, yeah. I was late, get, late getting on. Um, yeah, I just want to say, I mean, just listening to TJ talk about, you know, the labor intensive, uh, you know, work that they have to do to make sure that their players are safe. Uh, I commend all our member organizations that are going through these things. I know these things aren't easy, um, but being easy doesn't mean, uh, being hard doesn't mean we shouldn't do them. Uh, to keep our players safe. So I commend everybody who's uh, taking those necessary steps to keep their players safe and so that soccer can be safe and people feel comfortable coming to play. I, I get the hesitation for sure. So, um, but yeah, with that said as well, thank you for everybody for coming on. Um, asking questions helps others also ask other questions. It, uh, so engagement is really important to us. So thanks for everybody for joining tonight. I really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. So I think, again, thanks to all the member reps for being on the call. Um, thanks to Eden, Nathan, Raheem, and the SSA staff for doing the work to get this ready and make it possible. And uh, uh, again, we wish you all the best. We will be in touch and uh, let's stay together in this. Let's, let's, let's keep each other and our athletes and participants safe. And, and we just are sincerely thankful for all of you folks uh, for the work you do to offer soccer in difficult times. And uh, we very much appreciate it. So on that, Eden, uh, I wanna say thank you to everybody and uh, we'll see you again soon. Good night. Thanks everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a good night, guys. Thanks.